Hi, this is Cheryl Gallant, your Conservative Member of Parliament for the Canada Day Ready writing of Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke. In the science fiction movie Minority Report, Tom Cruise plays a police officer who arrests people before they commit crimes. The police are aided by a few special people with the ability to see into the future. The entire theme of the movie is that even when you can see into the future, it's still wrong to arrest and detain people who have not actually committed crimes. Clearly, Trudeau never saw that movie. Uh, I doubt he's even studied the legal, political, and philosophical foundations of our justice system. If he had, he'd not be introducing a new law to detain people before they commit crimes. The new Bill C-36 would even allow liberal government-funded hate organizations to go before a judge and seek a special order to detain or restrict any person they suspect will publish hate speech. If you're unfamiliar with groups like this one, uh, one recently labeled entire communities in the Ottawa Valley as hateful. Under Trudeau's new hateful law, similar organizations could target individuals, local businesses, churches, and schools in those communities demanding they be penalized or restricted without having done anything. If such a group can convince even a single liberal appointed judge anywhere in the country that a local church or school is like, likely to publish or communicate something only the radical left thinks is hateful, their target could be subject to arrest. This bill will give the radical left the power to silence you even before you have a chance to speak. The Trudeau Liberals are asking the federal court to prevent the release of documents revealing what happened at the Winnipeg National Microbiology Laboratory. Now, this comes after the House ordered for a fourth time that the Trudeau Liberals hand over documents regarding the transfer of dangerous viruses from the Winnipeg National Microbiology Laboratory to the Wuhan Institute of Virology and the subsequent firing of two government scientists. Now, the Trudeau Liberals previously ignored these orders. After ignoring these orders, the Liberal government made it clear that they would continue the cover-up of a possible national security breach. They asked the federal court to block the release. Trudeau's decision to go to new lengths to cover up a possible national security breach should concern every Canadian. Until the documents are released, we'll continue to demand the answers. There's only one choice to end this corruption in Ottawa. There's only one choice to put the toughest accountability and transparency laws in place, and that is Canada's Conservatives. The list of reasons the Minister of Defence must resign is long. Now, it's getting even longer. Mainstream media has finally begun to report on a group of Canadian soldiers who attended the World Military Games in Wuhan, China in the fall of 2019. On the flight home, so many soldiers were sick they had to be isolated at the back of the plane. Now, I first told you this story back in January of this year. <clears throat> now, Post Media has inquired about these reports and the Defense Department claims no soldiers were sick. This is a bald-faced lie. We know the department knows about the sick soldiers. We have a letter from the Surgeon General of the military from January, 2020, dismissing the sick soldiers' concerns. Remember, there were so many sick soldiers, they had to be isolated on the plane. Following the official declared outbreak of COVID-19, 
the soldiers offered to be tested for antibodies to see if that's what was making them sick. Even if the tests weren't available in January, the smart thing to do would have been to take some blood and save it for later testing. Instead, their concerns were dismissed, soldiers were ignored, and the communists who controlled China were allowed to continue lying to the world about the origins of the virus. Had we tested our soldiers when they requested, we could have secured a critical piece of evidence proving the virus had been circulating in Wuhan for months before the outbreak at a local market. Public Safety Minister Bill Blair announced that as of July 7th, 2021, the Trudeau Liberals will be implementing new regulations on firearms to create a backdoor long gun registry. Now we say backdoor because gun owners do not reg directly register with the Canadian Firearm Center. Instead, they have the vendors provide the information to the Canadian Firearms Center. And it's shameful that despite having years to conduct fair and honest reviews of these regulations, the government is attempting to rush these regulations through without proper scrutiny. Instead of providing Parliament with the opportunity to consult with Indigenous representatives, firearms businesses, and law-abiding firearms owners, all of whom will be impacted by these regulations, the Trudeau Liberals waited till the last possible moment to prevent parliamentarians from being able to properly examine their plan. Liberals are demonizing law-abiding firearms owners while at the same time introducing new measures to reduce sentencing for criminals charged with illegal gun offenses. This is a confusing and hypocritical message that they're sending on crime. Together with my Conservative colleagues, we'll continue to call on the Trudeau Liberals to repeal C-71, to put an end to the plans for their backdoor gun registry previously introduced in 2019. And speaking to one firearms uh, vendor, I learned it may be nearly impossible to purchase a firearm over a weekend. If a backdoor gun registry wasn't bad enough, the Liberals are moving full steam ahead on their plan to buy back firearms they recently prohibited. Yesterday, the Parliamentary Budget Officer released a report on the Liberals' plan to grab our guns. The report was not able to estimate how much this gun grab will cost in total. He could only give an estimate of how much it would cost to purchase prohibited firearms. There was no estimate on how much it will cost to run the program. The PBO says it'll cost $750 million to purchase the firearms the Liberals themselves prohibited. We don't know if they will be reimbursing at the actual value for, or for a nominal sum. And when New Zealand tried this, the cost to administer the program doubled from the original budget. And based on the New Zealand administration and compensation costs, we're looking here at over a billion dollars. Like the first Liberal government gun registry, the firearms buyback program is yet another billion dollar boondoggle. And it does nothing to address violent crime, gun smuggling, and gang violence. In fact, every dollar spent purchasing a rifle from a lawful firearms owner is a dollar which cannot be spent preventing criminals from shooting children at birthday parties. The police have charged two men in a birthday party shooting last week in Toronto. This won't shock any lawful firearms owners to hear, but both men were charged with unlawful possession. A billion dollars will be wasted on a symbolic gun grab. How much will be spent helping the kids who were shot? One could almost call spending a billion dollars on a buyback to appease lefty voters and spending nothing to help the inner city victims, systemic liberalism. That's all we have for today. Live from Ottawa, this is Cheryl Gallant.
wishing you a good night.